Press is defined by the pressure applied to the key wave after it's struck. Commonly referred to as aftertouch, press is one of the most intuitive dimensions of touch and easily integrates into the way your hands play the seaboard. Let's navigate to preset number 95 called Pluck and Drone and take a closer look at press. Just by looking at the graphical representation here, we can deduce a few things. The slope isn't a straight line, so the modulation is going to unfold a bit differently than it did in the last example. In this dimension, x-axis is representing aftertouch, or pressure applied by our fingers after they hit the key wave. And the y-axis, again, is representing any amount of modulation. As we apply pressure, we shouldn't hear any modulation until we've pressed down a bit. And once we cross that threshold, we should hear a significant change in the sound. When we click on press, we'll be able to see what parameters are mapped to this gesture. For this preset, it's assigned to adjust the level on sample 1, the level of oscillator 1 and 2, the feedback on filter 1 and the delay amount on filter 1, and the cutoff on filter 2. If I just hit the key wave without any sustain, you can see that most of what we're hearing is sample 2, which is that percussive plucking sound. It's only when I hold down a key wave and apply pressure that the levels of sample 1 and all three oscillators come into play, creating that stringy drone component of this patch. It's very common to map press to parameters which control the volume or brightness of a sound. This way you can get very expressive volume swells which respond very much like a traditional instrument would. A little bit goes a very long way with this one. Since volume is the parameter that goes hand in hand with press, adding just a little bit of color to this gesture can be really effective, such as a slight cutoff boost we have here. And you can hear that brightness really come into play. Let's map the placement of the two samples and two of the oscillators so that as we apply more pressure to the key waves, the sound sort of splits wide and becomes more narrow as we remove pressure. We'll start by making sure that press is selected, and then we'll head over here to sample one, and then click on the arc of pan and drag all the way down. On sample two, we'll do the opposite, creating a hard right pan. And then we'll repeat that process on oscillator one here and oscillator two over here. But we'll leave oscillator three right in the middle. Now as we press on the key waves, we've created even more dimension with this one gesture. It sort of pulls itself apart. I'm really into the adjustments I made on this preset, so let's save this into our library so we can always access it later. We're going to do that by clicking on the menu icon here on the top right hand side and select save as from the drop down menu which appears. You can assign all sorts of tags to each patch which will help you sort through them later on when you're composing. I'm going to add the tag motion to this patch and then add the word stereo to the title. From now on we'll always be able to find the setting inside of our library. There are a few modes that you can play the seaboard in which we covered earlier. While in expression mode, the three touch faders on the left-hand side will adjust the sensitivity of a few key gestures. The fader on the right with the circle on top controls the sensitivity of press, and you can adjust this until it feels right for you. And when you pull it all the way down, you'll actually see a light illuminated in the middle of the fader, which means that press is no longer engaged. Watch and see what happens when I press the key waves now. As we wrap our minds around how Equator is working in tandem with these gestures, one of the challenges is getting your motor skills to jump on board. You can practice using press a number of ways. Let's head over to patch number 110. Glass dome bells. First, I would start with single melodic lines and playing patterns which have moments that you can press on, so to speak. I find that two note phrases naturally lend themselves to this gesture. And the next step would be to try multiple notes at the same time. Try playing a chord and then adding pressure to just a single individual note at a time. 
You can create interesting internal melodies this way or spotlight a particular note. Usually when we're voice leading chords, our ears gravitate towards whichever note is on the top, and this way we can create our own internal melodies. With press, we can pick and choose which note we want our listener to hear at any given moment in time, even after we've placed our fingers down on the key waves.